Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the canyon. Welcome back to another It Came From The Workbench installment. We're going to be going fairly hot and heavy with It Came From The Workbench installments because we're getting a backlog and uh, the weather at some point. The weather is going to uh, viciously turn on me. So we'll see what happens. I have no idea how many episodes this is going to stretch out into. Uh, we have had, it came from the workbench installments in the past, which were done in like three. We've had the ones that were done in two. I think Skeeter, it came from the workbench 23, got two episodes and then was off on his way. Uh, Jester got like four. Steve has gotten like four. So typically the, I would say three to five. That's typically where we would go. Now, for this one, I think, I think, I think I have everything. I think I have everything. Of course, we have the most important part. Base Camp Builder's Kit, of which we will be using gearbox, axles, shock slings, none of the chassis stuff. And my least favorite part of the 10-3 Base camp included is the chassis. So if I don't have to use the chassis, maybe we are golden because we're not using the chassis because we're zokuing. We're just zokuing right off the bat. I said to myself, self, you could build this right out of the box, much as we did with the regular, the 10 2 builders kit, the raw builders kit, then zoku it and then compare the two. I don't need to. If you want to see me drive a base camp, I did like an hour and 20 minute long video on the base camp and the problems that I saw with that vehicle. And this corrects the problems of this vehicle. This one will be better though, because it's not going to have the base camp body, which is honestly, categorically, the RTR body that I have the most problem with. The Sendero that you get from on Elements and the whatever generic pickup truck that the Sport is that comes on TRX4s, they have this ability to self-write. You can turn them back over. Uh, the Enduro SE and by extension, the other Enduros are very good at it. TRX4s are very good at it. And it turns out a lot of that has to do with the shape of the body. And... The, ba the, the, the base camp pickup is too small. Like the roof tapers in way too much. So it has a very small, small to the point where it almost doesn't look scale cab. So when it rolls, it rolls too far and you can't get it back onto its wheels. How well will we do fitted with a Zool? I don't know. We're going to find out. Got to get a Zool on there. So we're, we're, oh. So we're putting all new stuff here. Fusion 1200. Straight axles. Should be perfect. AGFRC SA75 CVSW V2. 3S Direct. Get us about 700 ounces. Little Enjora, boys. So we're testing some stuff. Uh, I have not used a V2. I have not used this gearbox with Dig. I have not tried this Zoku kit. I've not used this body. We got a lot of new things. Wheels are still in the beadlock drawer. Hold on. In the beadlock drawer. Why can't I open this drawer? Here, here are the wheels. Well, there's two of the wheels. And here's the other two. Conditionally. If it looks like the track is too narrow, we we have these. Well, I, as you can see, that there's definitely a, a color theme going here. I am well and truly hoping that these are them. I would prefer to put a wider hub on those and use those. I, I want the, that's one of my favorite. Whatever the style this wheel is, somebody can tell me. Whatever style this wheel is, it's one of my favorite. I have, I think I have four sets of these. And 
I have them in 2.2 as well, in 1.9 and 2.2. They translate really well. There are some wheels that don't translate as well. Like, they look good, really good in 1.9, then they don't look so good in 2.2. For tires, whatever. Whatever it needs to be. Uh, there's a rack right up here. It's got, it's got tires all over it. Canyon Trails, Tusks, uh, Rock Beast XORs, Flat Irons, Trenchers, Deep Woods, Landmines, Hunks, Fake Tusks, Holds. Um, that some approaches. Did I say Canyon Trails? We've got a lot of tires. I don't think there's a need to rush out and buy this guy tires. Uh, my brain wants to go tusks, but I want to start off the, I want to come off the bench. I think, let me, let me grab them here. I, here's what I think I want to start with because we have yet to find a build that really embraces them. I would like to start with hunks. That's, that's where we're going to start. Depending on what episode, it could be this one. We don't know. We don't know how deep I'm going to go. Because, realistically, the only thing I need to build out of here, shocks, axles, gearbox, and then it's putting this together. And generally converting one of these over to a Zoku takes like an hour. So I just don't have to show all of it. So, hunks on, of course... Uh, Canyon Customs. I, I have I have softs, I have mediums, and I have an unbuilt set. There's a medium, so we will go with that. Whatever, whatever feels right. Um, I have no idea. I have no idea where the weight of this thing is going to turn out. I know potentially less than you all know. Because half of the things that I think I've covered, I only covered in my head. The other half of things I've forgotten as soon as I've said them. We have upgraded. I bought myself a new X-Acto knife. Because this is my preferred style of X-Acto knife, which tightens down from the back. And eventually it crushes this tube. And I, I looked it up on McMaster Industrial. And I've been using the same Tecna Edge exacto knife for 18 years so i was like treat yourself and i bought myself a new four dollar uh, exacto knife off of amazon 10 3 base camp um here's a bag that we are not going to use a lot of uh, here's a bag we don't even have to open gearbox shock bag Axles, both axles. Links. Draw shafts. And body merns. So I don't think I need that bag. This bag is hardware, but I can just source it. Don't need these. I think that's probably all we're going to need. We need A. B, C, D, and E. Hey, look at that. And we, uh, ooh, special offer on a Proline crawler body inside. Oh, tell me more, tell me more. 25% off. Yeah, like it went, hell. Oh. 40% off. 40% off, and I would have, I would have thought. Let's see what kind of, uh, oh. This is going on. This is going on the toolbox. Oh yeah, that's a nice. That's a nice big one. That's going. That's going right on the toolbox. Ooh. Ha ha ha. Please retain coupon and copy of the receipt to submit to Horizon Hobby Customer Service. Available redeemable online at axialadventure.com. Online on PL Body Twenty Five. Well. I don't really do the proline bodies, but you know, maybe they'll have. Maybe we can double stack. Maybe I can double stack a coupon. 
Get cool little license plates. California, Illinois, Oregon, Indiana, Pennsylvania, and Utah. It's kind of a wild. Uh, maybe somebody that knows more about crawler things will know the why. Like uh, California, I get Utah, I get Indiana and Illinois. It's interesting. It's interesting. So here's what we'll do. Uh, we're gonna build the axles. We're gonna build the axles. I am going to build these uh, quietly by myself, and by quietly by myself, I mean with very loud music on. If you have built a shock, you have built a shock. I will talk about if I if I encounter anything that seems out of the ordinary. Uh, I will. Oh, you know what? You know what? I'm doing the thing. It will be pretty easy to locate bags. There is one thing, I don't know if you want to know, but there's a thing that I want to know. And the thing is, I mean, the bodies feel nice. It's a pretty small bore. I bleeder hole, nice. Love to see it. There's an important question that needs to be answered. I need a thing that says element shock parts. And if you think we don't buy a lot of element shock parts around here, you are mistaken. This is the cup that you get on an SE shock that enables you to run drive tech springs. And I'm starting to feel like everybody uses the same threading. It doesn't feel quite the same. It's a little more coarse. That is, that is unfortunate. It's not a deal breaker. See, I can get about two threads on it and it stops. You can thread these caps directly onto GTS shocks and turn your GTS shocks into tiny little skinnies. Uh, I was hoping because I prefer running a small spring. It's not as big of a deal on this one because they have exterior caps. So I think this shock will actually look cosmetically better with the springs that they come with. I also believe that the springs that they come with are probably going to be too heavy because they look like axial yellows, which are 2.3. We're going to get some lay down on the Zoku. It might, you know what it might be? It might be fine. No way to know until we know. So, bag A is where it's at. Let us... Instead of uh, instead of being on board for every single twist and turn of the screw. Whoa, buddy! A uh, panhard bar mount. Uh, it's like uh, it's glad to meet you. Whew, that thing is up there. Nux guts, grease, inner bits. So. Here's what I'm going to do. We're going to cut away now. We're going to cut away now. I, uh, these, well, this is, this is how we treat this stuff here. For those of you who are here purely for uh, base camp content, uh-oh, some of them done been leaking. There's our vault of those, and here is our vault of these. If you build enough of these, you will get a collection. Because we use 222 purple and CV joint grease. So I am going to do the the boring stuff, the, the unfuns. I will I will put the carriers in. I will get these ready to assemble. I haven't even collated my tools yet. And then, oh, I don't need these. I don't need these because pretty little Mias ones. We'll try these out. We'll try these out. So I'm going to get these prepped to put together. And then, uh, then I'll tell you what I think. Yeah, will I build the shocks? No, 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 no. I'll see you in a minute after when, when I'm ready to pop these together. And then we'll, uh, 
I don't know. We'll talk about it. <laughs> it's the future. Uh, it's like there was like one and a half songs into the future. Were there surprises? No. No. Why? Well, oh, okay. No, that's not true. When I was digging through the bins to find some of the spare bits. Hey, 27 tooth. That will give us 9% front overdrive. I'll take it. I'll tell I'll tell I'll take what I'll take whatever I can get. No shims. Uh everything that you see before you is 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 what came in the bags. They go together wonderfully and props to the AR45 certainly for a, just a monster inner opinion bearing. Oh, man, those things do sound like... Oh, there we go. I was like, man, then the... The gears that aren't 30, they do tend to make a ruckus. Oh, yes. Uh, plastic cover? Just a hair, and we're going to have to rely on the accuracy of scales with too big of capacities. Uh, just under four grams for the plastic cover. And the Mias cover is 35 grams. So in weight weenie terms, uh, weight added per dollar. Not bad. Uh, I think if, 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 oh, it's so notchy. Uh, that I should just get I should just get started on the other one. Would you all like to know why it's notchy? You already all know why it's notchy. It's out of frame, but I, I feel like you know why it's notchy. I I was trying to uh, get thoughts and actions done in too close of proximity to one another. I should have built the other axle first. What was I talking about before I assembled this thing incorrectly? Good on the pinion. Uh, yeah, you need to use the pinion that's for the gear with the gear. So now we have to make a mess on the bench. Yeah, I just blew up another element pinion bearing a couple days ago. It's not exactly the most difficult thing to change. But, by the same token, it's not fun. Nobody's like, oh, you know what I would love to do? Replace a pinion bearing. Because whatever end of the vehicle it happens in, and 99 times out of 100. So, also, I would like to state that my own stupidity, I should have just put the 30 aside to begin with. Let's see. Oh, that was actually fairly smooth on the wrong pinion. So that that's much better. Now we get it. So uh, he's still here on the bench. If you can see right in trying to get it in the light, right inside there, focus for me, focus. I know it's very dark. Right inside there is the race from the outside of the bearing. Nobody's getting that out of there. Ever. So. So there you go. Look how, I mean, I'm not saying that they've been at this for a while. So they've kind of got it down. But they kind of do. And here's, here's another one. I think, I'm not 100% sure, I'm not 100% sure about anything, but I think I have come to a conclusion. Follow me. I think if a, if a rig has got chassis-mounted steering, which 
This one most certainly will. I think if a vehicle has chassis mounted steering, I genuinely prefer an offset pumpkin. Uh, I think it looks good. Uh, I, I've come around to a new way of thinking with regards to in equal length drive shafts. My first crawler, as some of you may know, was a TRX4, and I was skeptical because it's just basic math, man. If you have uh, two different length drive shafts, because of how physics work, only some of which I understand. The shorter drive shaft is actually rotating faster than the than the long one. Because just think thanks to good old physics, it takes torque longer to get from there to there than it does to get from there to there. Now, have I ever noticed it in practice? Do I think it's actually a problem? I mean, most real world one one vehicles have the pumpkin offset to one side of the side of the other. So I don't I I, I think it is my much ado about nothing. Hey, let's use the uh let's use the one that's already filthy. That way we don't drop that in a drawer and turn the whole drawer into a grease monkey. We are gonna put a bunch more in there though. And I don't mean a bunch. I've seen some stuff that's really heavily greased. That's about what I do. It's not it's not crazy. I think C V joint grease, I have I have come to the, the self-conclusion, the, the uh, confirmation bias theory solution that CB joint grease is kind of perfect for our application because I have had to service many a vehicle at this point, having bu built many a vehicle at this point. And over time, any grease... When, after um, umpteen number of battery packs, when this has to get taken apart and serviced, the first thing I look at is how much grease is still on the ring and pinion. And in many cases, the answer to that is not a lot. Between not a lot and none. But CV joint grease... I don't know. It sticks better. It just sticks better. It could be the amount of molly in it. But uh, whatever it is, yeah. So the 27 that got put in the front is not a Vanquish or anything like that. It is the... It is something more economical and... I don't think anyone would argue with the factory gear. And nice to see, again, very... What was that? Very nice to see Axial still giving us carrier and ring. So we got a machine gear. Like, that's... That's pretty nice, right? Uh, these are never as smooth. You can hear it a little. Like, like the tolerance is just, frankly, they're just not as good. But uh, that's, that's what we do. We save money. I have built, I've built a couple axles in my, in my days. I do hate axial hexes. Because they were clearly designed with plastic wheels in mind. Uh, they are thin. They are stamped. They've got those... I don't even know what to call it. Like these ridges. They've got these ridges. Uh, they, will, they will bite into your aluminum wheels. So I, I, will, I will be replacing the hexes at some point... But you need a fairly specific hex because the hex sits in so tight. And the threads, the amount of threads they give you is mental. But there you have some AR-45s. 
Uh, and and again, recent things particularly has. Oh, and I can show you. This is quote unquote the new AR. 45 straight right behind me well, it's not no no i take it back maybe i will hate this axle i don't know because uh this is the ar-45 from the straight axle conversion kit and it's it's exactly the same <gasps> Ooh, but i got black covers now ah, that's a bonus right there um i don't know i don't know what it is about these axles I, I, as some may have seen, I'm running an AR44, AR45 mix on a, on a mullet build. That AR45 portal rear is great. It is doing the work. The Colonel, Colonel Mustard runs AR45 portals all the way around. I've never really been impressed because it, the AR-45 took away from me, and in, by extension, it's not just the AR-45. The AR, the new AR-44, like the AR-44 that comes with the builder's kit, it has, at least these C-hubs come off. It has fixed C-hubs, but these C-hubs mount in one position. And I genuinely, genuinely well and truly prefer the older AR-44 style or what Element does with the, like, the fluting so that you can clock your C-hub and adjust your own caster setting. This caster is set and it, uh, you know, I'll give them this because of the eye pinion, that caster angle looks okay, but like, trust me, I, I, I can work with it. So uh, allow me to change my, my pinion ang my, my pinion angle independently of my caster setting that said these are well-built axles and i like the truss i think and the 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 truss works this way vertically the truss does nothing this way you can still bow these things so truss can't make up for a hundred percent of the strength of the material. I mean, every axle housing has got a little bit of flex to it, but these don't flex at all up and down, but boy, can they flex this way. And I think four to aft is probably the situation that's going to, that's going to break things that are near and dear to you. So, but no guarantees, no promises. Whoa. That's, that's wild, man. It's wild. Woo. 5632 pitch. Oh, look at this. Look at that nice little machined mount for the dig. There's all the dig bits. It looks really complicated. Look at all the look how many. Oh, that's we're we're it, we're pointing ourselves in the right direction. If you got more than three, whoa, buddy! Looks like where the twins used to play baseball, baby. It's the Minneapolis, what was it called? I wanted to say Superdome, but that was New Orleans. Let's just say it's New Orleans now. It's the super, this is the big top. You could put a whole circus under that. That might be the biggest gear cover I've ever seen. That gear cover is impressive in its length and girth. Meanwhile, I think you could put all of the parts of the entire gearbox uh in oh and we're gonna we're gonna run into that problem i'm gonna have to dig i'm gonna have to bend dig at some point because here's all the bits and it uses a traditional axial servo saver mechanism so in one of these bags there should be a spring that goes to this stuff which goes to these little cups I have the adapter to adapt it to normal spline because this comes with a, a 20 and a 25 mini, the little 4.8 millimeter 25. So like a, like a reefs, a reefs 99 would use this one. And I think the 20 is for the spectrums, the SX 107, which, uh, or as I call it garbage. 
Uh, I would much rather use, oh, I don't know. Anything else on Earth, these are very beefy. There is no, there is no play in that at all. And I don't know if we can get a focus on it. Yeah, look at that. ABC. -a. Um, yeah, and they're marked. This probably won't focus up, but they say ABC on that one too. Uh, I I appreciate that. I appreciate that because more often than not, the drawings will be clear to a point, and then a lot of times you're just you're like, I think this is right, and then you put the wrong gear on the wrong shaft, and nothing fits together. We're gonna need that. We're gonna need that. We're gonna need that. This is all servo. This is all for the micro servo and the micro servo mount. The one piece I don't know yet because I still haven't cracked the manual open. I don't know what this is yet. That's a that's a neat little piece. We're not going to need that. So, I am going to do the same function. Look at this. There's a there's a proprietary piece for you. It's a little it's a little double baby. I'm guessing that is the spur adapter. So, oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm still that guy. Oh, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe some water. I guess this was enough talking. I'm going to start to lose my voice. Yeah, the dig engagement on this should be fantastic. So, so I'm going to finish my prep. I'm going to familiarize. I am going to get myself ready. Oh, I already see this. Bloop. We'll get this ready for assembly. I'll get all the little bits and bobs put in the places where the bits go and where the bobs go. And I, I will, uh, of course, first thing, locate the micro servo wherever it Hey, We'll get the micro servo ready. I will find the adapter. I think it's a Yeah Racing. It's a little aluminum guy. I will find that, and we'll get this thing put in together, and we'll see. Is it overwrought? Oh, I hate these pinion gears. Hate them. It is it overwrought? Is it overcomplicated? Oh, and that's just a straight four to one. This, okay, before, before I break away, I, I want to see something. I'm going to pop this out. I mean, I'm just going to run the gearing as it is. I think it'll be close. But what I wanted to do was dig through the bin and see what the spacing is on that. And it's it's this. I, I guess we call it axial. Uh, you could not put a Kimbro on here. Uh, you can't fit a Traxxas. You can't... Uh, when we get to the top shaft, which is, I'm assuming, this little guy... When we get to the top shaft, it does look like it's just two flat. So with the two flats, we might be able to fit some other variety of slipper eliminator in there. It does not look like there's enough. I'm doing the thing. I'm doing the thing again. It doesn't look like there's enough length on the flat to fit much else. We might be able... Does it sound windy to anyone? Because it is. We might be able to... Yes. With a little bit of machining. Uh, this is the backer for a belt drive unit. It looks like you can fit a belt drive on it. But with some machining. Because this goes way down past where the bearing will... Th th those are lands for Eclipse. So you can only go back to there. So I would have to machine this whole flange off. But then it looks like I could fit a, a belt drive unit on there. Spur options are a thing that is important to me. I realize I'm facing away from the camera while speaking. I don't think that it has enough open flat to fit a slipper. 
and the shaft size is too big to fit uh, the slipper eliminator plates from Element, and it's also too big at the thread and the flats to fit. I think that's just a regular, like a like a the slipper plate from. I'm reaching without looking uh, from one of these guys. It's too big for that slipper plate. So they've gone a little proprietary on us with this. I will see. I've got somewhere in a bin. I think I have another one of these, the slipper eliminator for Vanquish. How How's that spacing? Yeah, it's just that much different, which is... That's kind of a poke in the eye, really. Um, there might be enough room to get that on there, which would allow you to run pretty much whatever spur gear you wanted. But as it is, you're, you're stuck with that one. So it's going to get built with that one, but I'm going to dig around and find out... What is that? Uh, I'm going to dig around and see if we've got any other options. Let me get these parts collated. Uh, the bench made a little more presentable. And then we, that is a, that is a pretty looking little dig mount though. Uh, then we will get this thing put together and we will see, we'll see what we're working with. I, I, I can even power up us. We, we can, we can, we can set the dig before we even have this thing in or in the rig. I was going to say a rig, but in the rig. And then I will, uh, we'll talk about that and then we'll put some shocks together. And uh, I haven't thought any further ahead than that. So I can and will say that the, the gearbox gets gets just a little bit more axial. Uh, the, th this is retained E-clip in the front, two bearings. There's another bearing. We've got these two guys. I want to say it's this output bearing is like one millimeter bigger. Five by ten by four. Two of them up here. Yes. The output bearing over here is in a 5x11x4. By by then there's a 5x8x2.5 and, and a 4x8x3. Like, that's really, really close to the same size. Uh, screw lengths are very, very axial. In the bag, in flatheads, 8s, 10s, 12s. Uh, it's pretty easy to mix them up, but uh, whatever you do, don't. It turns out, looking uh, through the manual, the ABC is that there's an, an option gear pack which changes this gear and adds an idler gear for use with portals. That's, that's what that do. I'm imagining it goes to smaller teeth on here, so there's less gear reduction as the portals will have gear reduction. And I have already managed to get it in backwards. That, that actually worked out, though, because I greased myself less than I thought I would. We're going we're gonna to group it up. I have... Uh, I have very high hopes for this dig module because there's a lot of engagement points for it. Looks like a little crazy star there. That's excellent. This guy is just four bolt on there. He goes out here. Massive output bearing on that side. Happy to see that as well. We'll see how much this squidges. Do we need to add more? I don't think we need to. I just think that I will. Because if we can go without taking this apart immediately, that would be that'd be outstanding. This is the guy, man. 15 by 21 by 4. That's a big boy. So that is the main... It, it's just a three gear. Three gears of three gear. Goes together nice. As I said... I mean, goes together real nice. That that feels like it's got bolts in it, and it and it dinna. Now, we can alternate that. We can alternate praise with complaints. 
So you'll see right there. AXIC0146 with the arrow pointing at these little fellas here. How about how about instead? How about you just say M3 by 12? That'd be great. Instead, then I gotta go, huh, 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 huh. I'm not gonna memorize 70 part numbers to uh, be able to put this thing together. So this is an instance where what I do is I take all of the screws and I collate them by size so that I don't accidentally get the wrong screw in the wrong spot. Because could you easily accidentally put the 10s over here and the 12s over here? Sure. Would it make a difference? I mean, like how much penetration are we getting? Yeah, I think I think it would. Looks like a garbage disposal. Uh, it feels it feels plenty smooth. The mesh the mesh should be great. Uh, we're already we we we're putting we're putting the dig in. So the dig goes this way. I mean, it's kind of foolproof. There's a hole over here. How are you going to put an axle in? Yeah, there is that. So the dig rides on that. The littlest one. So the rear drive shaft is on the littlest one. So I went ahead and already clipped on the dig. And lo I love seeing metal. metal. A metal dig operator, yes. The fork. And this is a nice hefty piece too. And four on the dog. And then the, I, I will show you in a second here the dog that goes on the other way. So th this is the way I, I kind of prefer to do it. Yeah, that slipped, that slipped right in. That's nice. Because this guy is just going to slide straight down over and then will be attached. And yeah, you can see in there, look at those big, nice, deep. And we've got one. One, two, three, four. Yeah, we got eight. One, two, three, four. Yeah, four slots. So eight engagement points. That's uh, I'm 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 on board. I'm fully on board. If this thing will cooperate with our little Injora servo, then uh, I am a hundred percent. Like wait wait. Wait, wait for it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that thing, that thing snaps together. This, this guy should be nice. Again, the sandwich, the compliment sandwich with a complaint in the middle. This gearbox, where did you go? Where did you go? Already in the gearbox, stupid. This gearbox will make you hunt for the manual because we got two big 25s down here 12, 12, 12. I would just automatically assume that that's a 12. But we're assembling an axial vehicle, so I cannot assume that. It is an 0146. Again, that is a 12. Because, you know. We've all been bitten at some point. That thing is... Oh, listen to that positive, like... Yeah. It just, it just drops in. I love dig. And I love when people will do dig. Well, you're definitely not getting this motor mount to rotate. This, this motor mount has been done in such a way that you can only put it together one way. I'm not, I'm not opposed. I can hear that dig mechanism clanking around in there. Within just a few minutes here, I've got a radio set aside over here. I've got the 1200 out of the box. We are going to get the 1200 mounted. The spur gear is kind of an odd choice. I can't, uh, 
Ooh. Uh, there's no there's no complaints there. I'm not going to complain about tight fitting parts. That's how they ought to be. Are we true? We are actually more run out than I would have anticipated. Let's see if we can see the run out here. Right there. Lift and down and out and down. Hope, we'll, we'll hope. We'll hope. It feels really good. The, the, the backs has, has, has got a good feel. Oh yeah, I went ahead far enough in the thing to figure out what this is. It's your, uh, it's your lockout. If you want to lock out, dig. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this right her and right now. Don't lock out, dig. 005. Ooh. Mm, okay. Now, oh, that, it, like, this is, this is some of the tightest axial parts fitment I can remember. Now they do use so and don't don't use power drivers people. The don't don't just take it from me. Thank you for purchasing your Zoku kit. Please resist the urge to use a drill. I throw your manual away. We only drill here. I'm running out of battery. Nobody can tell because like See, I can feel it tighten and I know this stuff. So, to all of you out there, I shouldn't have put that on yet. It would be a lot easier to put this on. As a matter of fact, I don't... What's the order that they wanted? They don't even say. But for, for my own sanity, I'm going to pop this thing off. Oh, oh man. I On record... I love I love how this is going together. The axles went together nicely. There was definitely some axial in the gearbox, but the the how well the parts fit together is gives me hope. I will say the gear housing is unthinkably beefy. And the gears are all steel. You're you're not. What, what do they call this thing? The L L C X U. That's not a. That's not a mellifluous name. But almost, I think you're supposed to bottom it out. Ooh, it's starting to hurt. Ah, it's as far as we can go. Oh, it doesn't even matter. It just goes to the flat. Uh, a lot of these dig mechanisms, when you have to set them up, that thing has to be tightened down to where it'll go all the way in. Uh, this this is not one of those. Yeah, this is this is not a light gearbox. It does feel very heavy at the bottom because we had that big dig bit, and then the dog in the middle was heavy as well. So I think they've kind of and it's not forward it's not forward heavy at all. Uh, I, I I don't think that any of this was by accident. We have got to put the servo in here and we have got to get the motor mounted because, and another, yeah, I'd like to uh, uh, offer another compliment here as well. That being, look at where the placement of the dig friend is. So even if the dig friend sticks straight out like that, which I think it will, I've lost, I've lost the motor. If, if you can clear a fusion, and that's all the way in, if you can clear a fusion, that's all I ask. Is it still a little too tight? Yeah, because from the look of it, it looks like that linkage is going to have to fit between right in the slot between the motor and the transmission. Why do we do these things, man? It doesn't... We don't... We don't have to get the tolerances that tight, guys. Give us a little bit of room. 
more often than not, by the time one of these rigs is done, it's just a vast amount of empty space underneath the shell with all of the stuff crammed in on top of each other. This is uh, categorically the opposite of go work on anything. I was going to say smaller scale, but I think a more accurate uh, statement would be correct to scale. Work on something that's actually 10th scale. Uh, I just soldered some plugs, battery plugs, for a guy for a 10th scale uh, Techno Truggy. My goodness. Everything in that vehicle is directly atop everything else. I am going to clock the wires away from the dig unit. I think that's probably smart. And then I remembered. I remembered these screws, these particular guys, these are way too long to use with a fusion. A fusion, the depth in the in the case is only about, I don't know, six millimeters. So we we don't even need tens, we need eights. I probably should have had this out. Is that what these are? What are those for? I want to fly by only the seat of mine own pants. Now we've galled up the threads in that hole somehow. I don't know what's happening. It feels like I'm trying to drive a standard screw into a metric hole. Yep. Doesn't matter either way, they're all too long. And I'm afraid to throw anything in bins yet, because all of a sudden, it's going to do a callback on me. And let's go, oh, hey, remember that screw from four steps ago that you thought that you didn't need? Well, you need that now. This motor plate is quite thin. This motor plate is quite thin. Eights are too long. I need to use... I'm going to try to find some that haven't been used to death. M3 by 6. Yep, that looks right. Let's not accidentally mount the motor upside down. Not saying that I've done it. I will have to also dig in the bin here for a... 14 tooth. As I said, for setup, we're going to put that 14 tooth on here. But I, I detest these axial pinions. Uh, they're just like, I don't know. I don't think this is going to be the one that changes my mind. Every one I've ever had has been loud, no matter how carefully you set the mesh. And I would like to think that I have some idea of how to set a gear mesh. I can hear that pinion. I can hear that pinion and it's not powered up. Oh. Okay, that's my bad. They did indeed tell me to put the servo on there before for obvious reasons before putting the motor in place. Uh, I was just too excited to get the motor in place. So th this is okay. This is uh this is work aroundable. What I need to find is a battery that has some charge in it. We are ever prepared. Half charged is half charged. We can make this work. And then we'll cut away again like as if by magic. And when we return, I will have this servo installed and we can watch Dig flop around. We go into channel four because we love, what do we love? Dig, no, what else do we love? Cruise control. Not even <laughs> Infinite resistance in the wire stops things from turning on. 
heard something. Yeah, there's a little run out there. But I think most of it is that pinion. Okay, this guy should be right here. Sounds good. And we won't know. Oh, that spur sounds... You know, okay. I got to shuffle some bits around. I got to get the servo saver installed on this servo. It's not going to be fun. I need to be on my own. I'm going to get this put together to where the gearbox is complete and ready. And then we're going to come back and I'm going to pull this 14 tooth pinion off. And I am going to put a... I can't make promises. Well, here's how much I like them. 14. It's a 13. It's another one. It's another one. There's soon to be yet another one. I, I really, really don't like them. There we go. 14 tooth. Make sure it's a 32 pitch. It is. We are going to install this exact pinion gear, that one right there, and watch how much, like, remember that, mentally record this. That sounds disgusting. We're going to put that pinion gear on there, and you're going to hear what it sounds like, and you're going to be like, Axial, why? That. Almost as fast as I can do this. All right. Uh, hop on board with me as this train makes a couple of stops. I appreciate that they included all the little bits uh, to lock out dig. Don't lock out dig. They gave you dig. Use dig. This dig particularly, if we can find a good way to show it. Here's full dig stroke. That's it. Servo is limited to 12% in one direction, 34% the other direction. Now, I don't know how you feel about... Uh, and I can't, why can't I, Metrodome, the Metrodome, I almost said King Dome, that's the one in Seattle, they keep tearing all the domes down, if you're okay with having a spur cover the size of a stadium that baseball is played in, it's fine, but here are some reasons not to, A, it's unnecessary, uh, if you're driving in a river, like, I guess it'll help keep floating contaminants. It's not about the water. It's about keeping like sand and sticks out. For most of us, there's there's really no reason. I run gear covers when absolutely necessary, like a wire runs directly across the top of it. The banana here in the fleet, for instance, has to run a gear cover because the sound module is right here like this. And the wires come out right there and they go right over the top of the gear cover. So to do any gear adjustments on that vehicle, I have to take the sound module out because the, the wires are right there. They would get eaten. So first reason not to run one, and and this this will be this will show you because that 14's already out. We got rid of that. I can show I didn't screw it on. Everything on this thing snaps together. So here's the sound without the gear cover. That's full throttle. There's still a little bit of run out in the spur. All the noise here, all of it, the sum cumulative total of noise here is coming from, from that spur gear. Uh, I don't know why it's as clattery as it is. It's not, it's not an offensive noise level. And also when we're going slow, you can really hear that run out. But if you put this sub box on it, You know, if you're familiar with how decibels work, that's what, three times as loud, four times as loud? It sounds terrible. So unless you're going to put some rock wool in there, why does that thing stick out so far? Uh, yeah. You want to quiet your vehicle down? Take that thing off. Uh, so there's, oh, we can, we should be able to, we should be able to exhibit here. So my hopes, my hopes are higher than ever before. 
that dig engagement is a real good. And as the dogs are all beef and I'm, I'm digging the memory banks. I feel like almost every dig I've seen, if not every dig I've seen, has got three that locks into however many are in the face. It's usually just three to three, sometimes three into six. Four into eight. And we really, it's fine. It's fine. Is it right up against the, again, the end of the can? It's pretty close. Does this thing, like, why is this out here so far? Like, the way the servo mount is, just looking at how it's assembled right now, with how this servo is mounted, that servo, these mount, that mount should be adjustable so that it could slide back. This thing should be half the length that it is now. I can all but guarantee that at some point in the future, I will make an, look at the wamble, wangle, wangle. I will make an aluminum one of these that isn't, what is that, seven, eight millimeters too long? I'm holding on to the spur now, so let's not hit the gas. Yeah, look at that. Let's get it against the light colored background. Everything about this gearbox, I like. Uh, if this bracket were that much longer and were built to accommodate you know they want an SX-107 or something there. But was built to accommodate a full-size servo, and so far Vanquish with the Phoenix is the only one really embracing that. If they had built this thing to hold a full-size servo, I would be shouting about it from the mountaintops. And I kid you, I, I'm, not, I'm not, that's not, that's not an exaggeration. Uh, the ability to run a full-size, although this is a quick one, and uh, 17 bucks for that little Enjora. We'll see how it does. It should not be hot. No, there's no, te there's no temperature in anything. Uh, we'll see how it does over time. But, I mean, we are, we are cranking along. We are cranking along. We have got a gearbox. It is under power. It is no longer under power. We don't need grease anymore. Don't put the grease away. We've got to put shocks together, and who can withstand the fun of putting links together? Now, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to go over there on the floor and pick up the instructions because you know, you know, you know, I threw them over there on the ground. You know, I did that. Uh, but uh, are there any adjustments to links that need to be made? I doubt it. I don't think there will be, but uh, nevertheless, I should check. I'm also going to, uh, there's no, there's nothing approaching a guarantee that the, these springs are going on. It's the same rates all the way around. Does it feel like yellows? Yeah, those are yellows. Uh, yellows, axial yellows are stiffer Wow, they, they really expect us to just befoul the whole operation. Two tubes of 35 weight. What are we looking at? Uh, we'll talk it down a little before I, before I uh, start putting it together. What are we looking at in terms of pistons? Three hole. They give us two options of three hole. A bigger three hole and a smaller three hole. I will see what the, there were, I, I leafed past it. Shocks were supposed to be before the gearbox, but my house, my, what just flew off of there? I don't see anything missing. My house, my rules. So I, uh, I decide who lives and who dies and when. Uh, shocks are built in uh, literally B1 and B2. AXI two three three zero three one. It's it's one of those things. They just they, they leave it up to you. All right. Fine, whatever. If if anybody sees a spot where they mention 
two, three, what, what did I say it was? Two, three, three, oh, three, one. This is a shock body. Shock part composite. It's all just one tree. It's all just one tree. So, I don't know if my caliper will get down. I could do it with drill bits. I could get the drift and get out here and tell you. I'm just going to make a guess. I'm going to say that's about a one millimeter hole. And that is about a... Maybe a 0.7 millimeter hole. So we'll build them slow. So we'll go with the smaller holes for 35 weight. We'll use about one of these tubes of 35 weight. I am going to, and okay, so so in case you were wondering, all right, like if we go less than 10 seconds, we won't get a strike, right? We'll be fine. So if anybody's wondering, I don't just stand in here when this isn't on, when you're not here with me. Uh, I, I'm not just in here listening to the sounds of the wind, hoping that it doesn't knock tree branches onto the roof of my workshop. Uh, for, for a little bit of insight, just, to, just for a moment, just for a few, uh, uh, a, a few fleeting seconds here, this is what it's like when you're not here. Uh, little Childish Gambino. So that's what it's like, you know, we're not OSHA approved. We're not wearing any PPE. I don't even have shoes on, uh, but it's how we, uh, we of a certain uh, cerebral chemistry uh, deal with minutia, right? Do you know how many of these I've built? Do you know how many of these I've built? I don't think these shocks are going to be any different than any shock I've built in the past. And uh, this morning I was sorting links. That's been one of five. Because you start to get a little, uh, what's that word? Retentive about how your shocks and things and links and everything else is organized. So I'm going to sit down. I got to do Eclipse. I must do Eclipse under the presence of loud noises because I will lose my ever loving mind these are my hands these are the clips these are the clips right here so i'm gonna get these shocks put together nothing to see here move along if you've built a shock you've built a shock aside from maybe like drab text because you need a special tool for that and i have the special tool for that it looks like this here's a, an expensive tool that you don't get to use very often reep, reep. Uh, micro, micro uh, snap ring pliers. Everybody, every draft tech that's come in here, save for two sets, which I ordered myself. Everyone that comes in for other builds, either come pre-built, or I guess the people pay the extra money. If you are ever thinking about sending draft techs in or having a build done here in the canyon, uh, don't get your shocks built. I actually like building those. It's kind of fun. These, less, so... Let me, I, I, what I need to do is start making a pile of all the parts I haven't used. I'm going to put them in the Metrodome. All right. I'll catch back up with you in just a minute. And when all this stuff will be like together. So I had lofty aspirations when I rolled into this one. Namely like, I wonder if I can do the whole thing in one. Can we do it in a one -er like we did with Clifford? Well, no, because I didn't really have to show how Clifford was built. He's just TRX-4, and I just built him. So, I'm going to finish. I, I came to a, a conclusion. The music was loud. I was having a great time. I only lost one shock E-clip, and they gave two extras, so we were doing real good. The finished shock, honestly, it feels pretty good. Now, I can't really... It doesn't look like any is weeping past. We're going to see. Because it has long been the only partially tongue-in-cheek statement that the only axial shock that doesn't leak is the one that hasn't been built yet. So I thought, as I had finished the first three, and when I finished the first three, I said, we're going to show them how 
we here build these. And then as I was putting the links together, I was like, we'll save one of those two. Now, axial links are kind of unique in crawlers and in, in that they are turnbuckles, which is why they have a little hole in the middle because you can actually adjust their length much easier than you can in others. Generally, when they're installed, it's nearly impossible to turn one. But sometimes I have a little, I have a broken, I have a tool like this that's broken, so it just has a little bit sticking out, and it's perfect to get in there and turn these. You can also take uh, an L key, a regular hex key, and turn them that way. It will bend the keys, though, so make it be one of those giveaway keys that you've got with something for free. So I take the shock body, and I thread on the... Don't forget to thread that part on, because they will not come on from the bottom. They can only go on from the top. And these were tight on a level that I had previously only seen when Vanquish uh, shipped out the first batch of Phoenix, and the collars were so unbelievably tight that we all had to order TRX-4 shock collars and put them on because it was the only way to make them work. The plastic would just strip out trying to get them on. So I've been using uh, Protect Blue because everybody was out of green slime at the time. Little bit of it, little bit of it, spooted there in the top. We have uh, the assembled shaft with piston. It is a 7.85 millimeter piston, and there is an 8.15 millimeter bore. So it's got a little biggie biggie. Biggie, biggie, biggie. It, it's got a little, it's got a little wiggle, a little, a little wiggle -a So what I do, just, just a little bit, get a little bit on the threads, kind of get it on there, and you will notice there's nothing installed in the shock yet. So we come up from below, we go like this. Now we have a seal, and the biggest risk when assembling these shocks is that you assemble the whole cartridge first which is what I call all of this stuff. If you assemble all of this first and you tighten the retaining cap down all the way, when you push this through, the threads are going to cut all the seals up. And then it's going to leak from minute one. So we push that down. We slide this up from the bottom. And it should just, it should go nice now. And because we're already assembled and the shaft is already in place, we can cinch it. You you should have, if you don't have your shock plier tool, you should. You can get about a full quarter turn. Then we make sure. Feels okay. We will, we will leave the piston at about midway. Drop it in the shock stand. We take the cap. The cap is a two-piece cap with the plastic upper. We'll pull that into place. Hold it thusly. We'll take a small paintbrush. And over here, we've got, we've got, some of the Protec. We're just going to smudge it around on the plastic part inside. We are then going to take the seal, the cap seal, we're going to put it in. And why do we use a paintbrush? Because we're going to use the other end of the paintbrush to insert the seal down into the groove. You can just run it around like that. Then we're going to go back to the paintbrush end and we're going to make sure that there's a little bit of blue all over the seal. And it'll look nice, just like that. He is ready to go. I was gripping it to the point where I, uh, I identified it. We take our 35 weight. They feel, thankfully, when I saw the amount of play, I was like, we've kind of already committed to 35 weight. We're going to squirt, get it up to meniscus level, just straight pull, drop it to the bottom. One big air bubble will come out. We are going to fill it up to just below the top level of the shock. See, right below the top. Go up about halfway with the piston. It will start to overflow. Pull it back down. There we are. There's the amount of oil. We are now going to take the cap. We are going to tighten it down to where it's snug so we can feel it. That will make sure that the seal is seated. Then we're going to back it off to where it's only on about two turns. You're going to get your paper towel or what have you. Grab the towel, shock like this, and that's bleed one. So that's first bleed. So we'll have it up to the top, let it release, tighten it down, mostly all the way, not quite all the way. 
and it will have a little bit of too much resistance. We want that shaft to go basically all the way in. So we're gonna back it off again, and we will have pushed oil up there into that seal area. We saw a bunch of air bubbles and just a little bit of juice. We will give it another spin. Sometimes you will have to do this two, three, four times, but the bleeder hole makes it easy and I can feel it bottoming out. Pull it out. we got a little bit of drawback, which is what we want. So not to horn toot, her, her. That is, in my mind, a perfectly built crawler shock. We will dial this up to where we've got about two millimeters of daylight in between. Grab our rod end. Pro tip, before you insert, before you go to install your rod ends, again, this is why everyone should have a shock plier. Before you go to install your rod ends, if you happen to have a three millimeter tap on hand, run that three millimeter tap in just like three threads, just beep, beep, pull it out. You don't wanna bottom it out because a tap can and will bottom out in the hole and basically strip the rod end out. So I just tap the first couple so that the, the shock shaft itself doesn't have to act as a tap. It doesn't have to run its own threads. It will just follow the threads down. Spring goes on, and we're going full bold here, everybody. We're going full bold to the point where we think this guy is going to get his ghost ride as outfitted with the yellows. Uh, stiffness be damned. So we're going to put the, ordinarily we don't, we don't put the set screws in. And we should have four shocks. Now you see how it, sort of decelerates at the end, that's good. That means that it's not wildly underdamped. Could it potentially, possibly, probably be underdamped? Well, absolutely. Absolutely. And in closing, in closing of 25-1, whatever this guy's name shall be, he's a Zoku base camp Zool, so I've just been calling him Zobazu which I think is a fantastic name. And I don't know if Zobazu is going to stick, but it might stick. Turnbuckles. This end, the end with the band, is the conventional end. So I use a drill. Get one end on. The links for this whole thing are pretty straightforward. They use this type of axial end on all but three links. The rear uppers have angled and, or I'm sorry, what I call bent. I call these bent, which are angled. And then the steer link, the tie rod, has these bent ones, which I call angled. Uh, I needed a way to sort them in between individual bins. Now for the other one, it's a turnbuckle, so you can't... Uh, uh, chucking that into a drill generally ends in tears or something broken. So, of course, you all have a tool lying around that's like this, built specifically for this job. If you don't, what anything, uh, don't use that one. But, like, guys like this, a two millimeter driver or a full two millimeter driver, just something through to hold it. For the other spinner, I prefer a guy like this. It's just part of a link, but it's got the little fatty shoulder on it. And because it's part of a link, the threads will kind of lock in there. If you use a smooth tool, the tool will just try to fly out. So I like to use a link. We're going to dial him back a little bit because you also, if you don't have this guy, have this guy because some of the measurements, let me find which one it is. It's this guy right here. They wanted 69.9 millimeters, which I also always think is ludicrous. I generally stick for about 70. Uh, we're at 69.8586. That's a lot easier. 60, I saw 69.86, 69.8788. We're right 
we're right there. So we're uh, maybe a tenth of a millimeter off. But why a caliper is important is, see, it's not butted all the way to the shoulder. They didn't want to make a new link. So they just went with the link that's closest. And there's a couple of them that are like that. Generally, all I'm going to do is, oh, also we got to, we got to install the balls. There's a couple ways you can install balls, balls. You can either pop them in with the tool, but the thing is the tool is really designed for removal. So getting them to pop in, I'd say it's like a 70, 30 proposition. About 30% of the time I will over grunt it and pop them out the other side. We got lucky with that one. So generally, when I have the links done, I will line them up. You just, you go like this and you want the other end to be lined up perfectly. Because if they're off of that, and I'm pointing at the book over there, if they're off by a millimeter, it's more important that they're the same length. Because if you get one of these one millimeter longer than the other, it's going to push that part of the vehicle off to one side or the other. So equal length is more critical than following the book. And also with upper links, I find that a lot of time the upper link lengths listed in manuals tend to be a little conservative and they'll get your pumpkin angle really flat, like which will give you more caster, but it will make the drive shaft come out and then go up. And I would rather have the drive shaft come out very smooth. Now these are high pinion, so very high pinion. So we, we have a lot of, we got a lot of wiggle room there. Oh, and with the shock, it's kind of the same thing. The other method, and I don't know how well it will work here on rubber mat. I kind of have, I have to go off of an edge. I need, hold on. I need to go off of an edge. I almost forgot for a minute that I'm in a wood shop. So uh, for those of you without a shock tool, go buy a shock tool. But many times it is easier to insert a ball by just doing this. You get on the edge and you just, you just push down. Some balls, balls, have such a tight fitment that you have to crank them in. But uh, that's not the case with the axial ends and balls. It just, I find it genuinely easier to do it by just pressing on a the edge of a counter or something than it is to press them in with the tool. Uh, the tool is really for removal. Uh, it, it's the only way, I mean, we, we'll do it right here. It's the only way to take balls out. They just come out. They don't go flying across the room. And then, like, the way I assembled all of these was, they just, they just, they just, they just pop together. It's, it's great. It's great. And, and you don't need a tool. But you do need this tool. I am wearing this tool out. The jaws are getting all galled out because you can grab links with it. You can, you tighten your shock caps with it. The holes in the handle are sized. You can put bullets in them when you're soldering them. This holds an XT60 plug. I mean, what is, and they're like 12 bucks on Amazon. Uh, I, I might have, like, I don't know if mine has been overused, but it's definitely been used. So we have come to where we are in the manual where, I mean, yeah, I got to build baggy, but it's baggy. And who knows if they're going to be long enough. We'll find out. We'll find out together in 25-2. Because I don't need to uh, do the rest of it. I will. Out of frame. I will. No, I won't. I won't. We're going to take... Here's the deal. Here's the deal. We're wrapping up. We're wrapping up for today. And this was probably hella long. Uh, God bless you for hanging along. So when we're done, and this thing is assembled in the other thing, like we don't need the chassis... Uh, part of me wants to just be a greedy SOB and just keep the body mounts. All of this stuff, all of the stuff that goes to the chassis, uh, I, we're, we're going to give that away to somebody who is kind and deserving.
because if you take what's in here, and what is the bolt pattern on the bottom of this thing? Weird. So the skid won't really help you, but you can, oh, you know what? I'm going to dig through the bins. I'm going to dig through the bins. We might have enough parts here to assemble this, to assemble what's left over, to assemble what's here, into just axleless, a rig without axles. And then, I mean, regardless of what level we give it to, uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to give it away. Because better it go to a good home where somebody can enjoy it than it sit here and gather dust in a box for eternity. Right? Am I right or am I right? Am I right or am I right? So, when you come back for the next one, God willing, we're done with the first box. We'll be on to the second box. And why would you want those C channels when you can have just, just, gor just gorgeousness? Just gorgeousness. And it's got all the bits. Servo mount, skirts, body mounts, the body mount pieces, the, the, the bumper mounts, the, the whole deal. We are going to... Oh, what flavor? Mango? Uh, we're... We, the next part and go have driving in it because it will take less time than how long it took to get here. You know what? Let's see if we can do it. I don't know if it'll fit, but uh, I do need to clean my bench off a little bit. It's, it's a mess. It's a mess. When I start working, I am a working. Uh, we can't get the axles and stuff with it. But, oh yeah, look at this. We're Look at this. Look at what we got. And then we'll just put this off to the side. It'll be all good. It'll be all good and nice. Nice and good. And I, again, I thank you all so very much for joining me here in the canyon. For building half of... Damn it. I think I accidentally, mentally giggled to myself long enough about Zobazu that... I feel like it might accidentally be named Zobazu. I like them when they come to their own names, and I don't want it to be something that's excessively winky, but, I mean, by the same token. <laughs> what, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I have to add the rest of that. Yeah, they give you two bottles, and you use that much. So I got I to gotta add that shock oil to the, uh, the shock oil bottle. I have an unmarked bottle that just has... Uh, laughably written on the side, 300 CST. And it's just the leftovers from all the shock bottles. So what weight is in there? <sighs> Call it the Canyon Blend, everybody. I don't even know what it is. So I feel like, rightfully so, I hope. I feel like progress was made. I have no idea what to do for the thumbnail for this. I never took one. Uh, we are... We are on our own in the weeds. Oh, I almost forgot the Metrodome. I am going to see you all in the next one. I hope in the meantime, you do your very best to have a good one. I had, thank you for joining me here on a windy afternoon in the canyon. Uh, man, I was just chugging along. Uh, I will probably mount the tires while not... I will mount the tires while not in your presence, but the... Full assembly of the Zoku. So we might get another... It might be a long one in the next one, too, because we're going to go from what you saw... When I took the box and I went like this, when I did that, you're going to... It's going to go blip, and we're going to build it. I'm going to use a power driver on 3D printed parts because, baby, I'm dangerous. And then we're going to drive it. I'm going to stick this big Axial Adventure sticker on my orange toolbox behind me over here. Uh, hopefully it won't take, I mean, we'll do it off frame, but I will, we're, we're going to rough cut it and ghost ride it rough cut. I'm not going to put any of the accessories on for that run. And after that one, we can have a little, we can have a talk about what color should we paint it because part of me just wants to paint it copper, uh, because I think it'll look amazing with the wheels. Another part of me thinks, that's too matchy-matchy. And then another part of me is like, the canyon has no white vehicles! And I don't, is he white? Is he copper and white? I don't, I don't, we don't even know what he looks like. You gotta ghost ride a rig before you can decide what painted color it's gonna be. 
So I am going to clean up the rest of the tremendous mess that I have made today. That's thread lock. Uh, I use a dipper to apply thread lock. I use the little tip of a pick to put it in instead of just hosing it into holes. So I will see you again. I've said this already. I'm rambling. So in lieu of rambling, comment below, like, subscribe, consider a channel membership, consider buying a uh, can Crawler Canyon tea. I make $2. And all that said, everything we've done, baby, everything we didn't do, in spite of all of it, or perhaps because of all of it, I am, and this is, this is an unfortunate thing, it's a painful thing to say, but I'm going to have to let you go.